Hi students. In this video, we're going to use our concepts of convergent factors, different measurements, and we're going to actually start applying them to what's referred to as the convergent factor method to solve problems. Now, this is the part of the course in the beginning. It's somewhat mathematical, but it's, it is challenging because it's all word problems. And the only way to get good at this is to do as many as you can. It's all about fluency. There's really not a way to memorize these problems. You have to look at cues. So I'm going to do my best to help you. Um, and I try to give some basic rules to help guide you. So my basic rules to solve problem, and books are going to have very similar rules. Number one, you got to know what you want. You got to know what you want if you expect to get there. If you don't know what you want, you're never going to get there. So when I say, what do you want? You want to know the type of measurement and very important, the unit. Because even if it's volumetric, is it centimeter cubed? Is it a liter? Is it a quart? You need to know the unit and aim towards that unit. You got to figure out what you're given, right? What, where are you starting from? To get what you want, you got to know where, you, where you're coming from, okay? Some books switch these. Sometimes they say, figure out what you're given, identify what you want. They're interchangeable. I just like to know what I want first. Then I call it the download dump. You're going to have to write down all the conversion factors to help you get what you want. So that's why I just say, you know, if you've taken any physics, um, they do scenarios where you draw everything out and you have these crib sheets and you kind of rearrange formulas to solve for the answer. It's a download dump. You're taking everything you know and you're putting it on paper. Then you're going to take those conversion factors, figure out how you're going to align the denominators to cancel and set up a path. I call this railroad tracks. You're setting up a path. And then you're going to use your calculator to solve the math functions, the problem. And then at the very end, because you've already watched the discussion on the metric system, units, measurements, and significant figures, at the very end, you know that in chemistry, no measurement is complete without the correct number of sig figs and units. So typically, in chemistry, any measurement is going to have three things, the numerical value, the sig fig, and the units. So that's what your final answer has to have. So I like picking, you know, some really simple ones at first, especially ones that you deal with on an everyday basis. So we were to read this problem, right? How many minutes are in 2.5 hours? So the Q word is how, how many, how many minutes, what do I want? I want to know how many minutes are in 2.5 hours. So your given is 2.5 hours. So you can set up a plan first or you can do the download dump, but basically we need to go from hours to minutes. And if you think about it, what could you use? Well, I know in one hour, there's 60 minutes, right? Now, the way I wrote this, it's not gonna help me cancel out this unit of arrow. So I'm gonna, of hour, I'm gonna have to flip this conversion factor to make sure that the units cancel correctly. So I would start with the 2.5 hours. I'll do it up here. And this is why I call it railroad tracks. I'm going to put hours on the bottom. One hour is 60 minutes. And then I see that the hours cancel. I'm left with the units of minute, which is what I'm looking for. Grab my calculator, do 2.5 times 60, and I'll get my answer. So that's what I did right here. So the answer, 2.5 times 60, gives me 150. Now, does it have the correct sig figs? It does. It has two sig figs. And well, why are we doing two sig figs? In the problem, 2.5 has two sig figs. 
Now, some people might look at the conversion factor one hour, 16 minutes, and say, well, one, there's only one. But we're treating those equalities as exact numbers. What does that mean? You can't argue that. It's 1.00000. So we're treating that as an exact number. Just like there's one Sean, right? There's 1.00000. There'd be infinite precision on one of me. So we're not really using that for sig figs. What I always tell students is conversion factors that we know that we're pulling into the problem, we're not using to determine sig figs. We're using the numbers in the problem. In this problem, there's two sig figs, 2.5. So we have the correct sig figs. We started with two, we end with two. And the reason why this zero does not count, it's trailing without a decimal. Now, if I put a decimal after the zero, that would be three sig figs and that would be incorrect. So I'm gonna leave it without a decimal and that trailing zero does not count. And I see that the units of arrow cancel and leaving me with the required units of minutes. So I have my number, I have the correct sig figs and I have the correct units. And that's the last step for solving problems. Let's, let's bump this up a little bit. So. How many minutes are in 1.6 days? So again, how many? What do I want? I want a unit of time and I want it in minutes. What am I given? I'm given 1.6 days. So I can do what? I could try to figure out a path, right? What's my path? Well, I can go from days to hours, right? How can I do that? Well, I know in one day, there's 24 hours in one day. And I'm gonna put the day on the denominator to make sure that those units cancel. And then I can go from hours to minutes, one hour, 60 minutes, we did that in that last problem, but now we have to do more than one conversion factor. Why? Unless you're weird and you know how many minutes in a day right off the bat, most people don't. So you would do it step by step. And then you could railroad track this, right? Start with your 1.6 days, days cancel, hours cancel, and I'll be left with minutes, right? So that's basically what you do. So 1.6 days, again, your days are gonna cancel. Then you cancel out your hours with a 60 minute conversion factor. I get the number 2300. Now you have a choice. I could just leave 2300 minutes and that's still, so I started with two sig figs. This is two sig figs, I could box that. I have to use a unit as my final answer because that's two sig figs. But if we want to do scientific notation, again, we get the 2300. We go after the first non zero digit on the left. You get 2.3. We don't count these, they're not significant. And it's times 10 to the power of three, and it's positive because it's bigger than one. And I get my answer right there. Two sig figs, two sig figs. And scientific notation, usually you always can tell when you have a zero that is not significant. Let's do one a little more challenging. What about gallons of water in liters, right? So what do I want? I want gallons. What am I given? 4.65 liters, right? So what am I gonna do? Well, you can do a path or you can do the download dump. You can go out of order. This is really the hardest part. I think it's step three and four, right? So one of the bridges I told you to know is liters to quarts, right? So in one liter, there's 1.06 quarts, right? And then how can I go from quarts to gallon? Now that now we're in our, so this is the bridge. This is the bridge of, you know, the metric system allowing me to get into the imperial system. 
And now that I'm in our system, I know that there's four quarts to one gallon. So there are the little train tracks that I always talk about, and I would go 4.65 liters. I'll see that those units will cancel, the quarts will cancel, I'll be left with gallons. So there's the download dump. And right there, 4.65 liters, the liters cancel. In one liter, there's 1.06 quarts. In one gallon, there's four quarts, and I'm left with gallons. I see that my final answer has three sig figs and the correct unit. And it makes sense too, because I have to divide it by four. So we'll try one more. And then at this point, I would highly recommend doing the problems in the book, but we'll do one. We've been focusing on you know, liters, so volume. And we also did time, let's do length. If a ski pole is three feet in length, how long is a ski pole in millimeters? So we want millimeters, we're given feet. Can we do a, a plan? Well, it's hard to go straight feet to millimeters, but you know, I know that you know, if I'm going from our system to the metric system, I need a bridge. So I might write, oh yeah, the bridge, the teacher told me to know one inch is 2.54 centimeters. Okay, that's a bridge. I don't have inches, I have feet. Oh, well, in one foot, there's 12 inches. So that'll take me from feet to inches to centimeters. Oh, but I don't have centimeters. Well, right, there's 100 centimeters in a meter and 1,000 millimeters in a, in a uh, meter. If you look at your rulers that are measuring in centimeters, in between the grad the 10 graduations between each centimeter is a millimeter so there are 10 millimeters in one centimeter now if you want you could take a longer route and go centimeters to meters and back down to millimeters and just remember there's a hundred centimeters in one meter and then there's a thousand millimeters in one meter. But the easier way is to do it that way. Either way is fine. So we set it up. We start with the three feet, which is given. We make sure that unit of feet cancels, right? So we put the first conversion factor of 12 inches, one foot, but we had to flip it so that this unit would cancel. Now we got to get rid of inches. So I take this bridge conversion factor and we notice that I flip this so that the inches would cancel. And then I need to get rid of the units of centimeter. So I take this conversion factor and make sure it's on the bottom. Centimeters canceled and I'm left with millimeters. I have to also make sure that I have the correct sig figs. I'm not using all of these conversion factors that I pull in. I'm only using the number given in the problem, 3.0 feet. Why does this zero count? It's trailing. Oh, that's because there's a decimal. Trailing zeros with the decimal count. So this is two sig figs. Okay, I come over here. This is also two sig figs. Now you might say, well, why? There's a trailing zero. Yes, but there is no decimal. So it doesn't count, it's not significant. If I put a decimal right there, it would count. And that would be three sig figs, but I don't wanna do it because my final answer has to have two sig figs. Oops. So I hope that helps. If you guys have any questions or comments, you can leave them in the comment section or in the discussion board or you can email me directly. Thanks so much.